Hey y'all, Olivia Hermosa from TikTok. If you like those true crimes and verified stories, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button to Petty Tupac TV. Now somebody told me to sign up for this app, Varro. It says just like Chime, it's just like a cash app, except you don't have to build a rapport with them for them to be able to give you an advantage. All right? This coming clutch. They gave me the money for the referral and signing up, depositing $20 and spending, and I was automatically able to get an advance. Now, when you set up legit, a legit, you hear me, a legit direct deposit, Two hundred dollars. You gotta pay twelve dollars back on it, but it come in clutch when you need it. And we all been in that spot where we need it. And the thing is, too, you really get your check two days in advance. And if it's a holiday, they're gonna give it to you three days in advance. So July fourth was a holiday. I got my check on a Sunday. Never got it on a Sunday before. Never got it on a Sunday before. I reached out to the guys. They gave me the link. Get some extra cash. Sign up for it. It's in the description, in the video, the bio, or wherever I post it. I'm telling you, sign up for Varo. And they allow you to lock the card to no pre-authorized transactions that you already had. None of that's going through if you lock the card. You know how we forget about those apps that we got to pay for, and then you, you know, you over uh, withdraw. And, uh, no. Varo is where it's at. I'm telling you. Get the Varro app. Peace and blessings be upon y'all. Look, look. Only owe $12 on 200 You know, get that in no payday loan spot. And without all the criteria, this and that, all you have to do is have a job, a legitimate job that can be verified. Once you put it in, you're going to be able to get this. Peace and blessings be upon you. Big five. Phone records emerged at the time. This was Monday, um, 2012. As key evidence in the murder against a suburban man charged with killing four suspected escorts and hiding their bodies in car trunks in Detroit last year. Events that reinforced the city's unflattering image as a dumping ground for victims. James Brown, 24 years old at the time, was charged with first-degree murder Monday, six months after he was arrested on lesser charges. The women were killed in pairs last December after visiting Brown's Macomb County home, and their bodies were stashed that way too, police said. Shakita Madison, whose daughter, Renisha Landers, 23, was a victim, said she fought back tears during a brief court hearing in Sterling Heights, uh, a Detroit suburb. Our daughters are in heaven, she said. Madison said outside of court, we'll see them when it's our time. The bodies of Landers and Demisha Hunt, 24, were found December 19, six days later on Christmas. Police found the bodies of two other men in their 20s, excuse me, two other women in their 20s, Natasha Curtis, and uh, Varnithia McCary in the trunk of a burning car. Brown said little in court and let his attorney enter a not guilty plea on his behalf minutes earlier. Attorney Jeff Kojokar told reporters that his client maintains his innocent 100%. At least three or four victims promoted themselves as escorts for hire on Backpage.com, which carries uh, classified and personal ads. Investigators believe that's how Brown made contact with them. Phone records show the victim's last calls were transmitted through wireless towers near Brown's home in Sterling Heights. Police detective Mary Whitney told a judge, Brown has been in custody since May on charges of mutilation of a dead body and arson in connection to the bodies uh, found in the cars. Prosecutors did not charge him with murder at the time, but said he was a chief suspect. Coach Carr suggested Brown may have incriminated himself during a three and a half hour recorded interview with Detroit police and said he would try to get the statement suppressed. There are some things that are not favorable um, that we'll need to attack, Coach Carr said. Detroit police led the investigation for months until determining the women were killed elsewhere. Then Chief Randolph Godby Jr. said uh, he was angered that the city's dark, desolate neighborhoods were becoming a place to drop bodies. And this is the truth. They do do that. Detroit police turned evidence over to Sterling Heights, including an interview with Brown. The causes of death still are listed as unknown by the Wayne County Medical Examiner, says Sterling Heights, Lieutenant Kevin Reese. Before the court hearing, prosecutors met privately with victims' relatives in a small room. The parents and, the parents and relatives of these victims, of uh, these women, were so, 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 so deep in pain. Uh, we'll work 
to bring closure to these grieving families, Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith said in a statement, Hunter's mother Denise Reed said she did not know anything about her daughter's connections to Backpage.com. I am hearing it like you. She said it is not important to me. It is not relevant. It does not justify taking my daughter's life. And she absolutely right. I don't care what she was doing for a profession. You don't deserve to go out like that from some creep. And uh crazy thing is, I've seen him before. 2012 was around the time. No, it was 2019, but 2000, excuse me, not 2019, 2011, 12 was the time I was introduced to that lifestyle and start seeing my friends from high school, start posting on there. I would chill with them and things like that. I've seen this man multiple times, right? And I seen, I heard a woman complain about him, but I just, you know, I didn't understand the life at the time. It was all new to me. Like, man, my childhood friends are really selling themselves. But let's fast forward to the defendant's appeal. Defendant appeals is right. Um, the right of his uh, jury trial convictions on four counts of first degree murder, four counts of disturbment, mutilation, defacement, or carrying a way of a human body. And mind you, this guy's like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, 300 pounds. This case involves the deaths of four women, Renisha Ladders, Demisha Hunt, Natasha uh, Curtis, and Vernithia McCary on December 19, 2011. Uh, officers reported to uh, promenade a street on Detroit's east side after receiving a call. The two women were found dead in the trunk of a vehicle. The vehicle was a gray Chrysler 300 and was backed into an empty open uh, garage by a vacant house. The police discovered the vehicle was registered to Renisha Ladders by running its identification number through the Michigan Law Enforcement Information Network. The women were later identified as Renisha Ladders and Demisha Hunt. On December 25, 2011, police and fire personnel reported to uh, Lynette Street on the Detroit's east side in response to a call that a vehicle was on fire and discovered two badly burnt bodies in the trunk of the car. The vehicle was a 1997 Buick uh, LeSabre that was backed into an empty open garage next to a vacant house. Both the vehicle and garage were damaged by fire. Lieutenant Dennis Richardson and fire investigation expert testified uh, that he believed the fire was caused by human hands because there were no alternative electrical or mechanical sources. The vehicle did not have a license plate. The bodies in the trunk were later identified as Natasha Curtis and Vernitha McCary. A homicide task force began investigating both incidents together after recognizing similarities between the age and race of victims, the location and manner and disposal of the bodies, and that all of the women except Hunt had ads on Backpage.com, a website where uh, persons could solicit sexual services after obtaining the victim's cell phone records. The police discovered one common phone number between the two groups of women that don't know each other, right? Which was registered to the defendant. The police also learned the defendant frequently got new cell phones. <laughs> Made several calls relating to sexual services websites in December 2011 and grew up four blocks from where the bodies were recovered. On May 1st, 2012, the defendant was arrested in connection with the women's deaths. At the time, defendant was living with his mother in Sterling Heights. Defendant was booked and transported to the homicide unit where Detroit police detectives Ernest Wilson and Derek Thomas, shout Derek Thomas, I know Derek Thomas, much love to you, brother. That was my football coach. They interviewed him. Before questioning began, Wilson went over defendant's constitutional rights using a standard form and defendant signed the form. The first um, interview ended when defendant demanded an attorney defendant was transferred to another location for the night the next day thomas and detective sergeant kenneth ducker arrived to transfer defendant back to the homicide unit for a buccal swab according to ducker and thomas during or just before the transport defendant said that he wanted to talk to police when they arrived at the homicide unit thomas reviewed Defendant's constitutional rights and the defendant signed a second written acknowledgement form during the second interview Defendant admitted that Landers and Hunt came to his house after he initiated contact through Backpage Defendant said when the women arrived they smoked marijuana together and he paid for one of the women for sex Defendant said he fell asleep and when he woke up he felt nauseous and both women uh, Both of the women did Defendant admitted that he drove the women's car into his garage, loaded their bodies into the trunk, disposed of one of the women's clothing in the trash, then women uh, then drove the car to the east side of Detroit, dropped it off near where he grew up. Defendant insisted that he did not kill the women, instead suggesting that the marijuana they smoke 
must have been tainted. The defendant said that, um, said that a few weeks later he contacted McCurry through Backpage.com and McCurry and Curtis came to his home. They smoked marijuana together. The defendant said he fell asleep in the basement. When he woke up, both of the women were dead. The defendant admitted that he put the women's bodies in the trunk of the car, drove it to Detroit, poured gasoline over the trunk, and rear of the vehicle and set it on fire with the lighter. The defendant said he disposed of the women's personal belongings in the trash at home. The case proceeded to January, uh, excuse me, February 2014, and the jury found the defendant guilty. Look, look, this is what he argues. Defendant argues that his incriminated statements during the second interview on May 12th were involuntary under the, the totality of the circumstances. Below, defendant filed the motion to suppress the statements. Man, I'm not even gonna read no more of that dumb shit. Homie, you, they, you, you're done. I'm going to reach out to him after I'm off papers to see if he want to do an interview. Like, bro, you told him. This had, you smoked marijuana twice with the women and they did. The same marijuana, I would have cut dog off. I'd have cut dog, I, I would have had to cut doggy off. And I remember specifically a woman complaining about him being too aggressive and, you know, other stuff. We, don't, we ain't going to get into all that, but I re remember seeing this big weird dude. He had braids at the time. No social skills. He used to hang around, just sit in the parking lot. He ain't wasn't spending no this dude. Oh my! You just you went to smoke, man. bro. You could have called the police. You have to dump the bodies, dog. This is crazy. To all them girls out there living this life, man, keep you some mace, keep you a knife, whatever you doing. Protect yourself at all times, my babies. You shouldn't be living that. But if you are, I can't knock you. I can't judge you, my baby. This is the type of. Oh, God.